Oh, hello. My name is Mara and welcome to Books Like Whoa. Okay guys, today's video is inspired by two things. One, I think the day this is coming out is Halloween, so happy Halloween, woo! Werewolf bar mitzvah, boys becoming men, men becoming wolves. Uh, yeah, all that good stuff, so happy Halloween. <laughs> and also, because recently, this month, I tried to read Kill Creek by Scott Thomas, and this book is so scary, I couldn't keep going. Um, I think it's, it's just this real atmospheric, real spooky. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna wait until I go home for Thanksgiving, and there are people in the house for me to go ahead and read this, because I just don't really wanna read it when there's no one else in the house. So this like genuinely was spooking me out. And that made me think about books that like genuinely el elicited some kind of scary response from me, like some sort of scared response, um, which I think kind of like humor in books is very subjective um, and can be quite difficult for an author to pull off. But when it works, it just really works. So I came up with a little list here of books that genuinely scared me in one way or another. Uh, and so I thought that would be an appropriate thing to share with you guys today. So let's dive in. Okay, these are going to be in no particular order, um, but first up, we've got It by Stephen King. I have not finished this book because this, the opening pages of this book scared me so much that it has now been five years and I've still not gone back in the water. I actually even know everything that happens in this book just by virtue of like seeing the movie and like being a person who's on the bookish internet. Um, and I, so you would think that I'd be immune to being scared by this, but that opening scene with the drain, like I couldn't. So I'm trying to decide if I'm ever actually going to read this. It's like a big old honker of a book. I'm not sure if this is ever actually going to happen. I need to kind of think that through, but anyway, this one, the opening of this scared me so much I could not continue. More recently, I read Serial Killers by Peter Vronsky, which is a history of serial murderers. And um, this one was very scary because it was nonfiction. And so it really is just like a really relentless blow by blow of the history of serial murder as we know it. And uh, I was going back and forth between audio and physically reading this one. And I was listening to the audio while I was like out in my garden working on things. And it was spooking me out so much that I had to like go inside because I like anytime any of my neighbors or the people who live in this part of my city would walk by, I'd be like, are you a serial killer? And guys, I feel really guilty because this made me treat someone the way that I would never like, that I feel really bad about because there was, I was getting gas and this woman came up to me and she had all her kids in the car and she said she didn't have enough money to go like to fill up the tank and she was asking for money. But like, I had just been listening to the part of this where it was like, don't trust women. They use women to lure you in. And she was like wanting me to go with her. So I shouldn't, like, I'd, I'd still stand by, I probably shouldn't have gone with her, but like, I didn't even give her money because I was afraid to like turn my back to like get the cash in my car out. And I felt so bad and I went back, like I felt bad and I tried to go back and give her money and she was gone. So maybe she was lying, I don't know. Anyway, all that to say, this really made me suspicious of people. <laughs> it really scared me, um, which is probably, you know, situational awareness is good, but you gotta kind of thread the needle there. Another nonfiction pick, and specifically about one serial murderer, The Golden State Killer, uh, and that is I'll Be Gone in the Dark by Michelle McNamara. Yeah, the writing this one is so, so good. It's just like really atmospheric, um, really creepy. This was another one that I kind of went back and forth audio to a uh, physical book uh, when, I was, when I was reading it, I think, or maybe I did all of that on audio actually. Um, but anyway, the audio was really creepy, but likewise made you kind of look over your shoulder um, and created a real, the, ser the one I was just talking about, Serial Killers, that one is scary purely just from an informational perspective. I think this is nonfiction that is both scary because of the content, but also the writing itself evokes a very spooky mood. So this one definitely gave me the creeps. Okay, and then The Library at Mount Char. So this is one, I think that you could be scared by the actual content of this book because it is dark AF. Like this is a really like very violent, very dark view of humanity. So like just that, like I would probably call this speculative fiction with a strong horror element to it, maybe. Um, so I think just purely the content could be scary. 
But the way that this book keeps you purposefully disoriented and you're never really sure what's going to happen next really adds the sense of menace to the plot or to the kind of like atmosphere of the book. And that was what was really creepy. So like this was a book that I didn't like I when I read it at night a couple of times, I didn't enjoy that. So like I would just be reading this during the day. Um, but yeah, this is a book that I feel like has a really like violent content that is supported by a very kind of you don't know where it's coming from mood in a way that I think a book struggles to achieve in the same way that a, a visual medium can do. But I think this is a rare book that allows you to almost have like a jump scare effect, if that makes sense. Anyway, this one scared me. Another book that scared me was The Historian by Elizabeth Costavo. So Costavo, I don't really know how to say that name, but um, kind of one of the only like true vampire books I've ever read that really scared me. And again, something I'm realizing here, I think authorial voice and mood is a huge part of what I find creepy, like the way that horrifying things are described or delivered. Um, it had sort of a cat and mouse element to that particular narrative. And it was sort of like a travel story in some ways, like they were moving around Europe a lot. And it kind of combined a vampire horror with also sort of almost like a action adventure thriller kind of thing. Um, so yeah, I remember that one's overall tone. Like I was genuinely like scared for the, for the um, characters and I wasn't really sure what was going to happen to them. So that like added to the scariness for me. Uh, okay, and then kind of a different take on being scared, The Uninhabitable Earth by David Wallace Wells, Life After Warming. This is like a really uh, visceral description of like what will happen to our planet for each degree warming Celsius that we achieve. And it is so scary. Like this is what has sent me down like a whole like really looking at how to embrace uh, it, a more environmentally friendly lifestyle in my own life in terms of just choices I make as a consumer and all kinds of things around like even just choosing not to really heat my house as much this winter, things like that. But also just like it's been inspiring me to try to find ways to get involved at a collective level. Unfortunately, where I live, that is not as easy as it is in some other places, but I am trying. So this really like this scared me into action. And actually, I guess I can say a similar thing about why we get fat and what to do about it. Uh, by Gary Tobbs. This one scared me about um, how the sugar industry is like a conspiracy. Like this is, this topic is like the closest thing to like a conspiracy theory tinfoil hat uh, state that I ever get because like this really gets into like what sugar does to our metabolism, to our hormones, to our bodies. And yeah, I genuinely treat sugar at this point almost like a drug. Um, so anyway, this one scared me into action as well. Uh, let's see here. Something else that scared me was The Hunger Games, uh, but like that whole series. So I binge read all three of those books over the course of a weekend. So this was back when I was traveling for work every week. So I was flying back from Chicago to DC, um, on a f Thursday afternoon and, or Thursday evening. So I flew that and I read the first one on that flight and was like sucked in. So I had to go to work the next day. So I did that. And then as soon as I got off, I went home and read uh, Catching Fire that night into the next morning. And then I read Mockingjay right after that. And just like the existential terror of those books and like the dystopian, just like, ah, like we're all gonna die like there's just something about a real like a really immersive dystopia that just makes you despair of you know our existence on this planet and that one definitely achieved that for me um I had to like binge read Harry Potter for like two months after that to shake off the overall just like gloom um of that particular reading experience so that one was definitely scary let's see oh yeah the good nurse um I think by Charles Grable uh, is super fucking scary. It's about um, one of the most prolific serial killers in the history of the US who was a nurse who used his position to murder people. And uh, don't read that book if you or anybody you love is in hospital because it just, it makes you very aware of how much faith you're putting into people. I think I mentioned this one in my favorite serial killer book video, but yeah, that one genuinely like really creeped me out, really scared me. Columbine by, I think his name is David Cullen. Um, is one of the most definitive like narrative nonfiction books of the last 30 years, just in terms of like telling a compelling story around an event kind of definitively. Um, and that was the Columbine shooting back in the late 90s. He's also written a book on Parkland, which I'm hoping to read in November. Um, 
but just it's a real I remember I read that after um, I had left high school I think I read that maybe and after I even was out of college but um, I remember there was a moment in grad school where I forget exactly what the circumstances were, but I was in the library and I heard a noise and it was interesting because the Canadians didn't have this response, but all the Americans, we looked at each other like, is that a shooter? And immediately just like all these details from that book immediately <laughs> came back to me. I was like, oh no, <laughs> like I know how this ends. Um, and I mean, I laugh, it's a sad state of affairs that that's like an instinctual response, but, um, but yeah, it's a really scary book. Uh, and that in general is a really scary topic. Okay, a few more on here. Um, I'll say Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov. Um, I tried to read that and couldn't. It just scared, it was too resonant for me um, on a personal level and I just couldn't get through it. It was not putting me in a good headspace and it really genuinely scared me just like being in the mind of that kind of person. Um, so that one was genuinely scary. Uh, New York to Dallas. So that's in the In Death series. There's very few of those books that I would consider, like a lot of them are dark. Um, that one I would call actually scary because there is a um, violent child predator who Eve, the main character in that recurring series, had put away and he escaped from prison and is like on a rampage and he's like coming after her and he's like terrorizing children again. And it's just like, it's it was genuinely scary because it's also like getting into Eve's backstory, which is along those lines. And oh, yeah, that book was dark and scary for me. Um, it just wasn't what I want from this book. So it was very well done, I think, but I gave it three stars just because I was like, this is too much. Um, it wasn't what I want from that kind of series. So um, that one was genuinely scary. Oh, and then like a classic. So we'll end with the, these two. But when I was a kid, I absolutely loved the movie, The Silence of the Lambs. Side note to my parents, I don't know why they were letting me watch that as a kid but they were um and the movie strangely didn't really scare me as much but then I read Red Dragon and The Silence of the Lambs and those were so like to me so much scarier than the movie um those books were terrifying I don't remember liking Hannibal but like those two I remember being very freaked out by so classic scary books for you so those are some books that scared little old me. Um, it actually, I don't, I don't know. I am kind of a scaredy cat for books. Um, and I think I kind of parcel out ones that are gonna scare me um, into specific circumstances, which is weird because I read a lot of mystery, but generally mysteries are not that scary to me, maybe because my taste runs more to the whodunit or procedural variety, as opposed to like, more of like a thriller. I don't know. So anyway, um, I for things that are, I think genuinely will scare me, I have to kind of be in the right mood. Um, and hopefully Kill Creek, I can come back around to in Thanksgiving when I have people in the house to protect me from the book. That's my thought process anyway. So all that being said, those are some books that scared me. Uh, let me know in the comments below some books that have genuinely scared you in the course of your life. Uh, maybe you are not as much of a scaredy cat as I am and it takes more, but let me know a book that scared you below. And yeah, I think that that will do it for now. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social meds if you are so inclined. I have all of that information listed in the description box below, and I think that that will do it. I hope you're having an absolutely lovely day, and I will just talk to you soon. Bye!